So do the fans want him out? No, the fans are pretty split on it, really. Um, the majority, I guess, are torn themselves, even those who, who are sort of inclined to want him to stay because they recognise this weird duality. On one hand, he's comfortably the best, most gifted player that they've seen at Everton in a long time. Uh, a lot of them obviously haven't had the chance to see him and felt quite sort of upset by that when the prospect of him leaving at the end of the transfer window was becoming likely or what they felt was going to be likely. But on the other hand, they're sort of trying to get behind Rafa Benitez. They're aware that he doesn't want him. He doesn't fit into how his team needs to play. And as well, it ties into the narrative of Everton not being able to really spend big in the window because of their past largesse and the fact that they've got this ridiculous, unsustainable wage bill and they're not doing enough commercially to kind of offset that in regards to financial fair play. So he's picking up, you know, in excess of 200 grand a week at Everton. And so... Is, he, that, they, is he the highest paid player at Everton? Oh, comfortably. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's probably nearer 250 grand a week is it, in what we understand when everything's factored in. Um, and so they're sort of like, they want to see him, but they recognise he's the ultimate luxury as well because whilst they do want to watch a player so gifted and entertaining and pull on a royal blue shirt, they're also kind of ever aware now, kind of as all football fans are becoming sort of amateur accountants that you know for every every game he, he's not involved, it's costing the club a lot of money that they can't really afford to be uh, at such a luxury. So when Benitez is building this Everton side, would it be fair to say that he doesn't want individuals? Yeah, Absolutely, be fair to say that he's all about the team and about work ethic and about everybody sort of combining to be more than the sum of their parts. So it's in stark contrast to what Carlo Ancelotti, in a way, had. And he brought players to Goodison, lured them here because of his his name and his reputation and his previous relationship. So I think it's fair to say that's the only reason James Rodriguez is at Goodison because of Carlo Ancelotti. So obviously it must have been quite disconcerting for Rodriguez to, you know, when he left. And then where he must have just, I'd love to have been a fly on the wall when he found out it was Rafa because obviously they didn't see eye to eye at Everton. And um, they know, I think most players in football know because Rafa's been out for a long time what he's about. It's in, in intensity. It's every player off the ball working hard. And I think he was in, you know, James was indulged under... Ancelotti it was he said repeatedly he's not here to defend he's here for, for what he does in the final third and that is just at such odds with what Benitez would say even your best player has to be willing to track back I think there's a sense that with from Benitez's camp with Rodriguez in the team sometimes without the ball you're playing with 10 men and that's just not going to fly where, where do Everton see themselves at the moment internally and where do you think the fans see them externally on what's happened this summer because to get Damari Gray for what they've got Damari Gray with if, if someone can work with him boy have they got a player there yeah. Andros Townsend I know is a I mean there is your good solid pro who will who will do everything possible for your team and your manager a lieutenant yeah. on the field if, if you want but then sort of James if James goes and Solomon Rondon comes in that feels like quite a difficult sell for a club who be, who wants to be on an upward trajectory. Yeah, and uh, so this feels like a slightly different mood around even the hierarchy. I don't think the overall ambition has been tempered or changed, but I think there's an increase in understanding that it was... Well, the, I think they, I'd like to hope they knew it was never going to happen overnight, but that even a quick fix of being owned by you know multi-billionaire just isn't going to cut it at the moment in football. And they're not able to spend, Fire Admiral sure isn't able to spend his money. They were in the curious situation of being able to hire one sort of stellar name manager and then he just left after 18 months. So I'd say there's been a slight recalibration. They've brought Rafa in. Rafa was aware of the situation. They weren't going to be able to spend big this summer. They hope that eventually they can whittle down the wage bill and get sort of players on the fringe who aren't contributing but on big, big money off and then back Rafa. But I think it will be more a sense of, there's almost, certainly from the, from the terraces, there's almost a sense of, like, let's go back for while while we need it to what made Everton such a strong unit in the sort of, let's say, last 10 years, before the sort of David Moyes era ended. And that was, as you just said there, that was really smart work in recruitment in the transfer window. 
a massive team ethic, everybody pulling together and a clear vision of how we play and where we want to be. And I think that's been lost a little bit since David, since David Moyes left. And um, Damari Gray is a perfect example. That felt like a Moyes-esque signing. And in many ways, I think Benitez and Moyes have got quite a lot in common. Maybe Benitez is the perfect manager for Everton right now. I heard somebody say that Benitez treats the club's money like it's his own. He's that careful. And I, that was definitely the case with David Moyes. Um, and we've had too many managers in between, I guess, who've treated that money like, you know, <clears throat> well, very differently from that. You know, they've thrown it around with abandon, uh, with agendas for who they want to sign as opposed to uh, directors of football. And it's probably contributed to the situation the club are in now. And a, and a final quick one, going back, going back yeah. to Rodriguez then. Um, we had Meza Ozil's agent on the Business of Sport pod last week who was, who was fascinating to talk to. But he told, you know, he made the point that the Turkish window stays open after the, the 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 British transfer window, some Middle East transfer windows stay open for the very reason, I think, of people like James Rodriguez, that they can try and get these players maybe on a better deal for them who haven't been able to move during the transfer window here. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I mean, you can't rule out it because... So the piece I've written today, I've kind of tried to imagine what James Rodriguez's thought process would be like. And I think a lot of it depends how hungry he is to be playing. He's got his imperative, you would imagine, is to convince the Colombia manager that he, he can he, he's still fit enough, he still um cares enough, he's still he's playing regular first team football and get back into that squad. It was a huge blow to his very being to be left out of the Copa America. Um some he released like, you know, a sort of six, seven hundred word statement about it. You know, he was affronted to his core. I think he called said he was emotionally disturbed by it. So he needs to be playing. If, if he's got a real sense that he's not able to do or unwilling to do what that is required to play at Everton, then maybe he will change his stance up until the end of our transfer window in the UK, which was, I'm not going to concede a penny of these wages. So I'll, I'll go, but I'm not going to go on a reduced wage somewhere else. You know, that's that was his position. And you would imagine that club no clubs in Turkey would be able to pay matches wages. You would imagine. I don't think there'd be any a transfer fee involved. Everton would just want to get get that wages, get those wages off their their wage base. But um, you never know. He might be suddenly prepared to accept a payoff, perhaps, and uh, a reduced salary if it means playing. But um, you know, he could have done that at Porto and gone and played in a you know a league he's yeah. been in before um, in a really exciting Champions League group with AC Milan and Liverpool, Atletico. Uh, he didn't fancy that, so. I, not sure I can see him go into Turkey, but you never know. 